Amen. Our God is mighty to save. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for another opportunity to be before you this morning, to hear your word, to be guided, to be counseled, to be instructed, to be corrected, even to be rebuked. Daddy, we thank you for the grace you have given to us to be alive, uh, to see the beautiful day itself. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the rainfalls. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Thank you, Lord, for supplies. Thank you for safety, for protection, for everything you've done. According to your will and purpose for our lives, let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lord, we appreciate you concerning everything pertaining to ourselves individually, to our nation collectively, to planet Earth as a whole corporate body. Thank you, Daddy, because you make life worth living. Thank Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Mighty Father, as we go your word this morning, we come before you, I mean, appeal to you for forgiveness of all our outstanding equities and the grace for us to forgive others grant unto us and those whom we have offended, grant them the merciful heart to be merciful unto us also. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Today, Lord, let it be a day that we remember for good. Let it be a day that we have special uh, testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. In mm -hmm. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Mm -hmm. You are very welcome to today's uh, family devotional. Please remember to share the message. And then subscribe to our channel. God bless you as you do so. You also are free to pass your comments on our passages on the YouTube as well as other social media where this thing is posted. Uh, we are taking a Bible passage from the book of First Corinthians chapter uh, 14 from uh, verse 22. I will stop at a comfortable place, suppose 22 to 40, but... Because of our time, we might have to stop somewhere along the line. God bless you as you listen. Let's go. Therefore, songs are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if all prophesy, an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all, and thus the secrets of his heart are revealed, and so, falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. How is it then, brethren? Whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two, or at the most three, each in tongue, and let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others judge. But if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silence. For you can all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be encouraged. And, and the spirit of the prophet are subject to the prophet. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive. As the law also says, and if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is shameful for women to speak in church. Or did the word of God come originally from you, or was it you only that it reached if anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which I write to you are the commandment of the Lord. But if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly 
to prophesy, and do not forbid to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. Praise the living Jesus. We thank God for this message. Yesterday we actually started it. Uh, but today we are going to look at peace as a topic. Peace. Yesterday we distinguished between um, between uh, prophesying and speaking in tongues. And today there is still further explanation as we just had that uh, speaking in tongues, you know, is individualistic and is uh, uh, define the person speaking in tongues. And if everybody is speaking in tongues, of course, it is uh, for the unbelievers to, you know, it's a sign for the unbelievers that there's God in us, there's spirit of God in us. And then the prophet, prophet sign one is for the real, I mean, for the people who have come into the church and then to, they are now seeing the practical demonstration when God speaks ahead through people and it is happening that, you know, people will now, you know, really trust in this God. Now, let's be that as it may. Let's, let me also clear one thing. Women not speaking in church. You remember, Paul is an apostle, he's a human being. He uses wisdom sometimes to get his messages across. It's not everything, he will even say it himself that, it's not everything that I tell you that is a direct commandment from God, but I, I, I believe I'm being led by the Spirit of God. So that the women should not speak in church is has to do now with still part of the orderliness and peace that is needed in the church, you know. But that notwithstanding, remember the Lord himself, himself says, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, not all males, not all females, but upon all flesh. So in the dispensation that we are, women have the Spirit of God in them. Who have the Spirit of God in them, they are permitted to even minister in the house of God. The truth is that the speaking that Paul was talking about is this jargon thing that, you know, you know, uh, our women, they talk a lot and if they are not spiritual, they will be saying things that are unspiritual. So I think that's a caution to still have peace in the church of God. Now, today we're looking at peace. I want to tell you one of the first things that a Christian, a born again Christian, gains from becoming a Christian or from becoming born again is the peace of mind. Peace of mind followed by joy. Now, peace, if you look at the entire world, there is no peace anywhere except the Lord really gives you peace, which is the lot of the believers. Then how do you have peace? When you begin to hear that I pop here, Yoruba nation there, answers on the other side, then kidnappers on one side, then unemployment, um, you know, plane, plane crashes, um, flood disasters, earthquakes, and then you open up to the news and that, you know, a father is meeting with the daughter. Uh, a friend snatches the wife, the husband of uh, of our friend, and, and then apart from the challenges of life, you're a married man, you can't make ends meet, you're in school, you don't even understand what you have been taught, or you understand you have the brilliant brain, at the same time there is no money to even pay for your school fees, and then you, you, you are confused, and then as a farmer, you make your farm, then the pull and his get there, eat up everything. And the money you spent to do it, you borrowed it. And then there is no other, there seems to be no other way of resolving the matter. Or you are just in financial debt all over the place. And then you even want to pray. Now let's go spiritual. You go there even in the church of God. You get there, the ministrations that are coming on, it is either they are demanding 
instant money from you such that okay let's take our usual topic tighten demand does not give anybody peace for instance and you know when you, when you don't have the money to pay in particular whereas god has removed that yoke already i mean we know that hebrew 7 you know uh, 14 tells us the details about the setting aside of the law including of tithing you know so we know all that because i, I used to remember anytime i was pestered for this thing those days not because because sometimes you have sometimes you don't have god recognizes this and then anytime you don't have now and pressure comes from the church as if you are backslidden and so many comments are being passed not even knowing that it is not even correct if we are not under the law then one is in disillusion and then not only that how about frequent demands for money i mean and uh, sometimes the threats that follow for instance, they will say, if you don't pay tithe, things will be tithe for you. Then, if you don't give to the house of God, I mean, yes, it is true. The Bible says, give. You should not come to your father's house empty-handed. But again, the Bible also says, a man should give, a woman should give according to how he or she purposes in his heart or her heart. So, it's not something that you demand as if it is a, a legal requirement. When you do that, you find that it is defeating the purpose of... The, so all these things don't give peace. Or again, let's look at parents. You have some children who are so stubborn and you don't even know the solution. You don't know what to do. And then not only that, uh, maybe your children graduated and they have no jobs. And then you begin to have issues. You begin to have issues. And all these things, they, they kind of give people a lot of troubles. And so the point that you now ask yourself, where is peace in this world? I want to tell you, as I said earlier, the greatest thing that first of all you gain when you come to Christ and you become born again is the peace. In the time of all these challenges we are talking about, do you know that with Christ in you, you can still be in peace, at peace with yourself, at peace with your God? Because all those things are things, yes, they are requirements, but they are not enough to give you sadness. They are not enough to give you sorrow. They are not enough to give you, uh, to keep you disillusioned. So if you have God, Christ in you, you have hope that little by little you will meet up with all these challenges and that God is there to answer them, to tackle the problems for you. You won't depend upon your own ability. So, you need, not only that, sometimes Paul says, I have learned to be content, whether I have or I have not. Whether it is time for there is food, there is no food, or there is, um, I'm able to meet certain needs or not. So, the truth is that peace, transcends all these challenges we are seeing. The peace of the Lord. May the peace of the Lord that also that is twin brother or sister uh, joy. May, them, may they be your portion. May they be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. That is why in spite of the challenges of the world, we are in the world but not of the world. If we are of the world, peace will elude us. But if we are I mean if we are of the world, yes, Peace will elude us, but if we are in Christ and we are physically in the world, peace remains constant. Joy remains constant in our lives. But the moment we drift into trusting in our own abilities or thinking that it is our own um, uh, manipulations or, or wisdom, you know, which is foolish before God, that you are not aligning with God, it, we're thinking that that's what will solve our problem, or quarreling with people. Everything, everybody is not good because you think they are your enemies. I mean, <laughs> and, and to the point that nobody even comes near you. You see that there is no peace again. So we are ought, we ought to relate with one another, uh, you know, uh, in peace. Then, peace in the church of God. I've always said it. If they are over-demanding for money, 
especially tight in the church of God and is not giving you peace, ignore the uh, demands. God has not given you the spirit of fear, the spirit of sorrow, the spirit of sadness. You are liberated from your previous life into a life of peace and joy. That's what Christ stands for. Christ stands for freedom. Freedom within the context of the Holy Spirit. You now live within the Holy Spirit. If you are in the Holy Spirit, there is nothing in this world that can move you or even weaken you or can make you contemplate committing suicide or even, you know, quarreling with other people. You mix well. That's the truth. Then if they are demanding money that is, you know, beyond your something, I mean, in those days, it took, it took me time to realize that the more noise I made about collecting money, 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 money collection because in my previous church, I found that people just ignored me. That's the truth. What they will do, they will do. And unfortunately, they will, the little they do is not up to the demands that the church is placing upon us, the pastors. And then when we now have that problem, it becomes our own body. It becomes a personal problem such that, okay, it will seem as if you are not performing. It, the money is now coming in. And then you can't even remember the converts to give them something. And then look at uh, what is happening all over the place now. In the church of God, people are not staying at home. I mean, demand, demand, demand upon demand. Let people give as they purpose. Ask, yes, but not that you begin to say the repercussions if they don't. When the Spirit of God enters into people, they will do more than you demand. So the prayer we need to pray is let God bless all members of our churches so that they can support the ministry, they can support the work of God, you know, uh, voluntarily, which is the new principle. Previous in Malachi, um, um, uh, Old Testament, Malachi 3, 8 to 10, is possible, is legal, legal requirement. And the letter kills. But in the new dispensation, it is the period of voluntarism. As the Spirit ministers to you, you do. So that you can have peace in the house of God. When also, in terms of program, when programs are too many, such that Monday to Sunday, you don't have any moment, even for your family or for yourself, you begin to lose your peace. And when you lose your peace, you know that you are, you are not, you can't even plan for yourself. That's why we say our churches should, you know, make their programs in such a way that they don't, I mean, you have the national uh, program, you have the, uh, they call it provincial program, you have the zonal program, you have the area program, then you have the parish program. Look at overlapping such that you see yourself being recycled in the church all the time. And then apart from special programs, like children's program, women's program, men's program, and all that, at the end of the day, you see that instead of enjoying peace, it is turbulence. This is not what God intended for us. That's why uh, relationship with God is personal. Yes, you know, converge in place and then worship your God but not that you are recycled and recycled financially, you are recycled mentally, you are recycled physically to the point that many homes are breaking. So let's be sensible in whatever we do. Peace, we have to have peace in our families. And we have to be, be we Christians have to be the principal peacemakers there. And we have to live by example that we are in love of peace, and then we can then tell others on how to go about, you know, making peace in the family. And then in the church of God, there has to be peace. In your place of work, there has to be peace. You and your children, there has to be peace. You above, among your extended members of family, there has to be peace. Everywhere you go, peace, 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 followed by joy, you know. You have to, like the leadership uh, topic we did treated yesterday, a leader that does not listen to his people, we have no peace. And interestingly, it is the people themselves that propose solution that you as a leader is looking for to resolve the matter that is giving you sleepless nights. If you are not a listening type, everything you say or you do is 
like the autocratic and everybody's against you. You see that there will be no peace. You won't even enjoy the leadership. God will help us. So peace is very, very important. And peace is in the heart. You see, if you are not peaceful, if you don't have a peaceful mind, you discover that uh, your BP will rise. You'll be quarreling with everybody. And you may end up having stroke. And any little thing can trigger the problem of maybe you don't have money in your pocket because the big problem that you think that's the end of the world. Whereas you can still remain in peace even while you are looking for money and you are praying to your God. And another thing that can give you peace is that any problem you have, leave, leave them or leave it in the hands of God. Pray about it. Don't just be, what do you call it? Don't meditate upon problems. Meditate about God. Joshua 1, 8 to 10. Meditate upon the word of God, not upon your problem, because your problem will fizzle away. The word of God will melt it. And as you have meditated upon the word of God, God will make a way from where you least expect it. Help can come from. I mean, living a, a testimony of what God does to his children and an over pampered child before God because he loves me so much. I just I so I so just trust in him that I hands off everything that I'm doing unto him and I'm getting more than desired result because I allow God to take control because I bother myself less about anything. Today now I rather would devote more time, you know, study the word of God and then uh, than to be thinking of, oh, the houses are haven't built. But brethren, there is no end to amassing wealth. And unfortunately, no amount of wealth you amass, unless God is in it, it may not last you till your dying day. You feel that it is the fear, hey, it is going, it is going, hey, I need to do more, I need to do more. That, And I pray to you, for you today, that your end will be better than your beginning. Your evening will be far better than your morning and afternoon. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those things that will cause panic for you in your old age, God will resolve them before even before you become old. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those are the things that don't give us peace. You have children, yo, you are afraid. Whether the husband and wife are fighting, whether the children are not, whether the hospital bill has not been paid. Why kill yourself when God has given you? Say God is their God. He will work things out for them in the best way, in such a way that even you don't kill yourself for anybody. The Lord God Almighty will help us in Jesus. I hope we made a point. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again for this great opportunity. We pray to learn these secrets. Heavenly Father, we pray today, let peace never elude us. You have given us peace. The moment we come unto you, we are not supposed to be over over yoked again, overburdened again, because it's a common to me. All you that have labored are heavy laden. We were heavy laden before we come to you. And you say you are giving us rest. And rest simply symbolizes peace. Please, Lord, let us have the true rest that we're supposed to have being Christians in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be to your name in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Please remember to share. God bless you.